Hey y'all, this is Pure Love, and Pure Love, for those who don't know, is a, a project of the HEAL Project. Uh, the HEAL Project is a, a my brainchild, um, that platform is that comprehensive or holistic sex education is a tool to ending child sexual abuse. And part of that work is doing Pure Love Talks with my daughter, Amanda, and we just kind of story tell you know and share um share instances of how i raised her and how we developed our relationship uh and um all the wonderful stuff and the pitfalls of that so uh today's topic is birth uh, and we wanted to talk about this topic and why do we want to talk about this topic mandy <laughs> because i just found out that i'm gonna have a baby Yay! My daughter's pregnant. She's preggers, and I am going to be a grandparent, and I'm super excited about that. Uh, and so, with the birth, you know, with being pregnant, um, a lot of things have come up, right? Uh, I'm thinking about how, what kind of a grandparent I'm going to be, and I'm sure, Mandy, you've been thinking about a million things. Um, and in that, thinking about how. Um, how I'm going to talk to my grandchild about sex and sexuality. And I'm sure uh, Mandy's thinking about how she's going to talk about that as well. So this is like a new and fresh opportunity because we've been doing this uh, talk show and we're talking in retrospect, right? I'm um, talking about how when Mandy was young, how we did stuff. And now it's going to be a whole new thing, a new era a uh, new child, uh, new experiences. Uh, so, I don't know, tell, tell me what you've been thinking about, Mandy, about the little bambino. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I, I've been thinking about everything down to um, how I'm going to explain how the world is and just how to read and just languages and just everything like this. It's like the biggest blank slate you could ever have almost like mm -hmm. you're creating something completely new and completely fresh. And it's like, you have to use every bit of wisdom and every little bit of knowledge that you've picked up in your life and trying to like pass that on to someone. That's such a, a humongous job, but I don't know. I'm like, I'm excited to do it, but I'm also, I, I realize the weight of how important it is. So it's like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a gift and a blessing, but it's a very weighted blessing yeah. it for free. You know, like it's not an easy thing that you just receive. But, right. I, I've already been like uh, collecting uh, children's books that I want to read the baby <laughs> or the babies because I'm convinced you're having twins. Uh, <laughs> so I'm thinking about all the books, um, all the topics. Um, and, you know, like when I was raising you, it was, you know, trial and error. I didn't have a model. So we just kind of went with it. Uh, and now, you know, I can think back on how I raised you and then how I could support you in raising, you know, your baby or babies. Um, yeah. And it, and it's scary too. You, you want one. No, I think it's going to be two, but. <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> you know, twins running in our family. So, so um, yeah. Is there anything? Is there anything that, you know, that you're thinking you would, it would be challenging to talk to the baby about 
or something that you're really excited to uh, to talk to the baby about in terms of like gender and sexuality? I feel like it's all gonna be really exciting because it's just like it's a way to give them like vocabulary or an idea of who they could possibly be or you know how to view or speak to the people around them but I my biggest fear in explaining these topics to my child is how to let them know about these things without instilling a type of fear or hatred of the outside world because it can be so harsh and unforgiving and Mm -hmm. how to like still remain true to yourself in spite of everyone else telling you that you're wrong or you're bad or whatever the world has to say because it always has something to say Mm -hmm. so you know i always want to you want to make it make sure that your child is strong and brave and able to like weather the storm so and because you know mental illness runs in our family so that's a humongous like the one of the biggest fears that i have because i know that it's more than a certain percentage of a chance that they will probably have something as well so that's a a thing that weighs heavy on my heart Mm -hmm. but it's not it's not like uh i don't think it's a a, it's a you know a death sentence or anything like that Uh, i think that it's something that we could navigate especially because we have the information and and because it's not anything that we're hiding we we talk about it very openly and we talk about our healing process and uh, therapy and all the things that we need to do to do self-care so i think that we're coming from a positive standpoint um and having mental illness whether it's anxiety depression um and all the things that we're grappling with uh i think that um no matter what we're well equipped with information and of course, love and understanding and patience. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful that whatever the case may be, it's going to be great. And we have each other, you know, from, I know that since you were a child, we've always talked about when you get pregnant, that I was going to be there, <laughs> that we were going to do this together. And I'm really excited and happy that that is coming to fruition, that I'm going to be and I want to be a big part of this baby's life because I am a strong believer that it takes a village and it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, mom and dad. It can be, you know, grandparent, aunt, uncle, best friends, lovers, you know, friend, li- lifelong friends, like all of those things um, have a positive impact, can have a positive impact on, you know, raising a child, especially when you're communicating to each of these people about, your values and how you want to raise the baby and then who you know who the baby's around you know i know in raising you uh you were always around um activists artists queer people you know just um people of color all of the people that i wanted you to be around um and learn some stuff from you know so i i think it's it's all wonderful and positive you know I'm just nervous. I'm like the the. It's like a you're going down a dark road. You can't see anything that's coming up ahead. So yeah, I'm just taking it inch by inch by inch. <laughs> so right now, how far along are you? I'm about to be four months. Oh my god! Still very early. <laughs> four months, and the and what's the size of the the fetus now? According to my pregnancy app, it's the size of a fig. <laughs> a fig. Yeah, that's bigger than it was before. Before it was just a cherry, <laughs> a raspberry, a grain of rice. So we're getting there. Now it's a fig. Pretty soon it'll be like an orange or a mango. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <clears throat> now thinking about you know, we're we're jumping ahead. Of course, the baby has to be born first and start, you know, we start talking to it and all that and introducing the baby to all the people around them. But as you know, I'm thinking already about um, daycare, you know, school. I'm also, I mean, selfishly, I'm thinking about me too, about how the baby's going to see me and um, 
talking to the baby about who I am, you know, like that I gave birth to you and that I am trans and that I'm going to be abueli, not abuela or abuelo, but abueli, you know, just a gender neutral term for a grandparent um, in Spanish. And um, I think, you know, like what that brings up when I think that you started understanding other people's ideas and views once you started going to school right because when you were with me you were with me and you had our world surrounding you but then when you started going to school it you saw other people's ideas and and um, biases and all of that and so you had to learn how to navigate that and figure yourself out in that you know um so that's one. And, and also, as you being the parent, you know, you're an outspoken person, fiery, and I know that you are fiercely going to be protective of the baby and anybody who messes with the baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, it's almost like this. I'm, I keep thinking about our introduction, you know, and I know that a, a, a lot of that is prior in, in your, you know, in your belly. I'm going to be talking to the baby all the time, um, making sure that the baby understands or hears my vibration, my voice. Um, I'm sure, you know, you're doing the same. And um, yeah, it's just like this. I haven't had a small child in my life for so long and it feels like ages ago. So this is definitely a, a wonderfully new opportunity, but also a lot of challenges because of the way the world is right now, right? And that fear you talked about, like it is a fine balance to teach correctly, like to teach the truth, um, but also not scare them half to death about stuff. And, and I, think, I think as oppressed people, um, we constantly have to, you know, balance that conversation with, with our kids. Yeah. Definitely. I, I really want them to still be a child of the world and want to see everything and meet people and, you know, be outgoing and open-minded, but still know that this is like under that nice layer, this is what's there as well. And don't be blind to it. Like mm -hmm. this you still have to protect yourself, you know, and be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. I think a, a way, uh, the way to do that is, is teaching, and I've done this with you, you know, just like teaching the skills that we want the, you know, the baby or the child or any child to have without weighing it with um, fear and negativity, right? So like, like for instance, uh, teaching teaching a child about, um trust right like who to trust when we talk about strangers and things like that um probably it is it well, was definitely age appropriate you know like how how much you share but it's not like people are scary people are dangerous don't go with strangers right it's in in essence teaching about um who trusting you know what was that trusting your gut yeah, well, absolutely. Trusting your gut, but and also like who you know, right? Like, so if you know this person, you, you know, because mommy told you about this person and this is a person that you can talk to um, rather than saying, don't talk to anyone because people are bad. I think there's a way to do it. Um, and it depends on the context, right? Um, what you're talking about, um, yeah, and it's always that balance. It's always that balance of, I, I constantly had to check myself to say, was I putting you in a situation that you were gonna be afraid to leave the house? And I don't, I don't think I did that because I actually, I definitely gave you like a lot of leeway to understand like freedom and fun, but to always be, I think I called it street smart. You know, you were, a, you grew up in uh, New York, you know, halfway in New York and halfway in Massachusetts. So you need to know how to navigate a big city like that. And so we talked a lot about the navigation of the city, right? Um, but I think with the baby, the first step, you know, when they start, 
interacting with other children and um, getting to that age of like two years old, maybe even one, it's about the, the sharing, right? Um, how to be kind and be friends, and then talking about consent even, uh, about what, what they have power to say yes or no to, um, and not making them uh, do things like hug and kiss people or sit on their laps. And that, that's definitely a, a place where you have to do a lot of checking of adults. It's mostly about um, you know, uh, teaching the adults around you and setting boundaries with adults around how you want them to interact with your child. Because I was doing that constantly with all the adults around me. Don't do this with my daughter. Don't say these words. Don't talk to her this way. So I think that's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I have to remind myself of all of those things because that's what we have to be thinking about with the baby. Yeah. Yeah. What were those things? Like, yeah, I think because people come and uh, I think people naturally want to give you advice or just tell you how to do things with your kids. And especially if they think that you are a younger person, right? They have this idea that they, um, can tell you something that they think you don't know. Um, so it really is about your stance uh, and your power as a mother and owning that. I get a lot of that from people in my age group too, or like if just because they've had a child already, like I know people who have just like a two year old. So I'm like, they are recent parents, but they're still like, don't do this and don't do that. And you gotta <laughs> do this, I'm telling you, you're gonna regret it, do this. <laughs> This is do this instead and do this and you got to do that. I'm like, oh my God, there's so many rules. <laughs> so many rules. You can't, 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 can't. I'm just like, man, I might as well just like lay down and be a human incubator and just like <laughs> myself and put a diaper on and just lay there and eat and rest. <laughs> just like grow the food. It's a lot of work. It's hard work, but it's really really rewarding and beautiful but it is hard work and it's constant work it doesn't end and it's a really i think i often say it's one of the most difficult jobs and can be one of the most rewarding jobs you do in your life uh, but it is putting in constant intentional work about yeah because really you're you're shaping a human right you are the first contact in the shaping of this human being and how they interact with other people, how they communicate, how they love, how they become friends. And I think all, everything that we've talked about is about that. It's really about that connection um, and, and having information, having information, um, just arming them with information. Um, little at a time but definitely that is the the power that is the power I, I definitely kind of feel like a little bit like a create like i mean i am a creator but like the creator almost because i feel like literally right now i have the universe inside of me just endless possibilities yes endless everything in like you just never know and then it's just all gonna come to a single point and then grow from there but i'm just like this just everything is just so unknown and vast right now mm -hmm. but, yeah i'm just waiting to see like if i'm kind of anxious so like i'm just like what's gonna happen i want to see what you're gonna look like i want to hold you <laughs> i want to do all that stuff but then i'm like i do want to wait for a little bit longer you know, so I can set things up before you get here. <laughs> um, but I definitely am excited. And I've been receiving a lot of love, you know, um, mm -hmm. in reference to it. So that makes me very happy, too. Me, too. Me, too. Um, I am beyond excited about this new life that you are bringing into the world. And I am so happy that I get to do this with you, that we, that I am going to be a support to you and that um, I can offer advice to you and, you know, you can take it or leave it, but you should take it. But uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's, 
it's a scary and beautiful and exciting thing that I'm just really happy um, that we get to journey through together. Um, and we get to share some of that stuff and the, the new fears and the joys, um, pure love. Uh, and I can't wait to show the little baby when the baby comes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I cannot wait. What'd you say? I just want to know what they're going to look like. <laughs> I'm like put combinations of features in my head but then I'm like it could o- it's not only just from like me and the dad it could be from you it could be from his dad from mommy from yeah. Bobby it could be from any generation like I'm just like this baby could look like anybody <laughs> so, we'll, see. <laughs> we'll see yes well this was a, a little short pure love but we wanted to we wanted to share the love with you and to share this wonderful bit of news and um it'll be something that we'll be sharing with you throughout and um yeah it's just another opportunity to put our money where our mouth is you know and and to do exactly what we've been sharing with all of you um and it's not an easy thing it's a challenging thing but we're going to we are going to move forward and really um really like raise this child in the way that um that we feel is of the utmost of importance with the skills the skills the life skills of um talking about um holistic uh sexuality education um to arm the baby with the tools to uh, understand um have knowledge uh, to have power um uh, and to have voice um to speak to us or any of the people in the baby's tribe family uh, extended family that can support help not ignore and understand that this is com- these are conversations that absolutely need to happen for this child and any child to thrive in life So thank you all so much for listening and being a part of this joy. Um and Mandy when's your due date? November 6th this year give or take 10 days. Give or take 10 days. You going to have a Scorpio. <laughs> I know you love it. <laughs> all right everyone, we will see you next time and thank you so much for supporting Pure Love and Yes, as always, please send in any questions, comments uh that you would like, uh any topics that you'd like us to talk about. That'd be great. You can send it to heal2end@gmail.com and uh check us out on my website igrivera.com and click on the heal project or click on pure love. All right everyone. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>